What's up, everyone? This is Anthony Pompliano. Most of you know me as Pomp. You're listening to Off the Chain, simply the best podcast in crypto. Let's kick this thing off. The following episode is part of the Off the Chain automation series, sponsored by IOTA. The goal of this special series is to explore the intersection of distributed ledger technology and automation, specifically around digital currencies, digital wallets, and machine-to-machine transactions. My core belief is that every stock, bond, currency, and commodity will eventually be digitized, and distributed ledger technology will empower the full potential of automation to be realized. IOTA is the sponsor of the automation series. Their mission is to support the research and development of new distributed ledger technologies, including IOTA Tangle. The IOTA Foundation encourages the education and adoption of distributed ledger technologies through the creation of ecosystems and the standardization of these new protocols. You can find out more about the automation series and IOTA in the show notes. Anthony Pompliano is a partner at Morgan Creek Digital. All opinions expressed by Pomp or his guests on this podcast are solely their opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Morgan Creek Digital or Morgan Creek Capital Management. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Pomp as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy, but only as an expression of his opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only. All right, guys, bang, bang. I've got Jason here with me. Uh, Super excited to have this conversation. So thanks for so much uh, taking the time to do this, sir. Oh, yeah. My, My pleasure. Let's uh, let's jump right into your background. Obviously, um, you know you spent a lot of time at Dell, but um, kind of you know what did you do before uh, getting to Dell? So I actually was uh, I'm a mechanical engineer out of school. I went to UT here in Austin. Um, got into I actually started at Dell uh, doing design of um, like the computer cases, plastic and sheet metal, you know, CAD design, and then I you know I've always been though interested in <clears throat> yeah, I like to say if it's fuzzy I'm on it. You know, any, any kind of uh, forward looking stuff. And I just started kind of driving my teams to do more R&D. So that kind of led me into uh, R&D roles, eventually into CTO uh, roles. Uh, there was a stint where I was at the, in the startup world for a while. And, and that kind of got me to uh, the experience wearing a lot of different hats. And then when I came back to Dell um, in 2006, just 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 always in you know, kind of was able to get into the, the, the forward looking innovation roles. Um, which you know, ultimately, ultimately you know, I decided, hey, I want to be more on the software side and, and kind of that business focus around it. And that kind of led me to, hey, what do we want to do with IoT um, you know, in, in 2014? And, and kind of as the, the buzz really started picking up. And, and uh, as I always tell my team, the best way to get a job is to already be doing it. So we, we just started you know, going, building a, a strategy um, within a small core team. And that kind of led me to um, you know, being in you know, my current role as CTO for IoT and Edge at, at Dell Technologies, so it's been a it's been a good ride. But it's always about kind of finding finding gaps, you know, surrounding yourself with really good people and being inquisitive and just go make stuff happen. For sure, I think it's a great outlook on life in general. Um, talk about uh, the patents. You, you've got a ton of patents that you guys have uh, have written and, and uh, are in your name. Maybe just talk a little bit about what some of those are and, and how they came about. Well, yeah, and they actually kind of track the, the progression. You know, a lot of the, the earlier ones that I've done, with, um, you know, over the years have been kind of more of, of mechanical type things. And then they start looking more like um, uh, the more and more software over time. There was a stint where we were working with a team uh, focused on how do we improve remote collaboration tools. So we've got a, a number of patents around uh, that. Uh, we were doing things around session continuity back, um, I guess it was maybe a little over 10 years ago around how you can drop off from one uh, device and pick up on another. And of course, that's a, that's a big kind of theme with, with different uh, ecosystems today. Uh, you know, most recently, we've been getting into a lot of stuff around, um, of course, IoT, you know, more broadly speaking, and edge, but then also lots of work around how do you um, uh, impart like intrinsic trust across networks? Because if we can't get to this notion of uh, trust at, at, at scale, um, it's going to be very difficult to realize the true potential over time. So it's just, it's a whole slew of stuff, but, um, you know, it's, a, you, know, a, 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 you know, lots of, lots of fun, different areas that we've been working in. For sure. What, what's like the weirdest thing that you've worked on on the technology side? <laughs> that's such a, uh, uh, that's a, ooh, man, what's the weirdest thing? There's so many different things. Um, Maybe what's your fate, your favorite, um, kind of patent that, uh, that, that you guys, um, put together. I mean, we did we did one that was um, around uh, you, you know when you're walking down the hall 
and, and you see somebody and, and they, you're like, oh man, I've been meaning to ask you for like three weeks, like about yep. this one thing. Uh, you work at home, like remotely, and you don't talk to anybody. You've got all these people sitting statically in your IM window and you might just get consumed with your work. And, and then you go back to work and immediately starts, oh, hey, I'm interested in whatever. So we, we, we did one patent where it literally as people would walk by, people would kind of like dynamically walk by based on an algorithm on your screen. Um, so it's kind of like walking by somebody in your hallway. Uh, um, and so it would be r randomized and kind of automated. And then the patent also included some stuff around, um, you know, based on the schedules that you mut mutually have, um, it would force uh, a virtual interaction with someone um, depending on, uh, you know, kind of the, the fact that you would have been walking by the actual physical hall because you were in those kinds of rooms. There's kinds of different claims around that kind of stuff, but this notion of combining physical and virtual and making you feel more like you're sort of in that, in that um, uh, you know, physical world uh, while you're working remotely. So get a bunch of things kind of like that. Um, That's pretty cool. Uh, I like that one. Yeah. Another one was around white whiteboarding. When you whiteboard uh, on a screen and say you watch a video of some people that whiteboarded and it's like this squiggly mess of stuff in the end. And, um, you know, you go back as a, maybe you miss the meeting and you're like looking at this, the, this, the people's camera pictures of the, the smartphone pictures of the whiteboard. And you're like, I have no clue what that drawing is because it was all done, you know, in real time and people had different conversations. And so the pattern was around if you, you clicked one line within that whiteboard and it would play you the recording of the conversation when that line was drawn. Oh, that's awesome. So you can kind of get the immediate context. So, yeah, a lot of kinds of stuff like that. You know, over, over the Got it. Years. And, and so today you are what the CTO of IoT and edge computing at Dell? Yeah, at Dell Technologies. Yeah. So, so for the portfolio, but um, yep, yep. Looking at the. Looking at IoT and, and I mean, edge computing is a, a, a broader term, big, big trend. Um, you know, and then I, the way I like to do things with 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 the teams is, you know, let's focus on outcomes and then, then let's back into tech, it, it technologies. So, so IoT, you know, with more devices coming online, you know, at scale represents a, a big new workload, a big new opportunity. Uh, but ultimately, it's really about focus on the outcome, focus on the use case, and then back into it all these technologies, and then. Then you get into things like AI and AR, VR and you know, 5G and all these different you know, technologies. It's best to start with the outcome and then, and then you know, back into it. So, but yeah, you know, you know, initially, you know, of course, at the core, focus on IoT. Yeah, man. Maybe you just walk us through for those that don't know, um, you know, what IoT is and then what edge computing is, right? You're, you're uh, uh, I'll venture to say you're an expert in this. So, kind of, how do you describe uh, both of those um, uh, trends or, or themes to uh, to folks? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so IoT. I mean, it's 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 not one single thing. Uh, we joke all the time. People, they're like, "Hey, I'd like to buy some IoT." It's like, "Oh, really? What color would you like?" You know, I mean, it's it's you know, IoT is a collection of 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 things, but really, it's about this notion of more uh, devices um, not associated with a, a particular user, so autonomous in that sense. Um, you know, placed out in the physical world, collecting data about the physical world, um, and and you know feeding that into um, uh, compute systems. And in the purest sense, you know, just give me visibility uh, from the physical world, you know, sensors around temperature, or pressure, or vibration, uh, cameras are one of the best sensors around. So, you know, you know computer vision is definitely uh, kind of a, a close parallel to IoT uh, with, with image-based um, data. Um, but you bring all this data into systems, maybe giving me some visibility, but then when you start applying analytics or you know, AI on top of that and driving change, that's when it, it gets you know, super value and you start kind of automating things. And whether it's in cities or, or uh, you know, building automation, um, obviously we have a lot of smart home stuff. So the things with, with your lights and you know, your Alexas and all that kind of stuff that, that would be considered IoT uh, in general. So just more devices online, driving more data that drive uh, more analytics that, that help you know, makes things better is, is kind of IoT. But with more of these things coming online, we just have so much data coming from the, the, the edge edge, the device edge, you know, uh, laptops, tablets, uh, you know, all kinds of different sensors, tra uh, traversing networks, all of that data. And there's a point where there's so much data that it just, it, it, it creates uh, bandwidth issues. It creates latency issues for response. If I, if I, um, you know, need an immediate response and I cannot tolerate any kind of downtime. Like if I'm a, a factory uh, and I have a robot on the, the floor, um, I need immediate response or there's a safety issue uh, 
in many cases. Uh, I don't care how many nines your reliability has on the tail end for your network, a wide area network, like a, a, a cell network, uh, you will not deploy your airbag from the, from the cloud. Not going to happen. <laughs> and so, so, so there's, there's a need for, for uh, edge computing. So this, this is a, about moving more compute uh, closer to the edge um, for reasons of latency. I need immediate response bandwidth. I've just got so much data that I'm getting from these devices that I can't send them over these networks because it just costs too much money. Uh, security if I'm a nuclear plant, I'm not going to be hooking up to the cloud. You know, that just exposes too much risk. Um, and then, and then the, 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 but the kicker ultimately is, is around, uh, around the cost of just moving a bunch of data around. Um, the way I define edge computing is moving compute as close as both necessary and feasible to the subscribers that need it. So, you know, like in the sense of uh, like a Netflix, they're moving more and more um, uh, of the, the content close to the cloud edge, you know, where the, where the telcos can then bridge that to your homes. Um, I, I, I often explain why we need edge computing with cat videos. Uh, my wife and I have three cats and, and, you know, cat videos is why we need the internet first off, of course. And then also we need more edge computing because if videos go viral, I have to cache it closer to the, the subscribers. If I'm a, a operations person, I need to run compute close to my factory floor or in my industrial you know, plant, chemical plant, whatever. Uh, um, if I'm a chemical or nuclear plant, I won't you know, connect to the cloud in many cases, or I'll use a data diode so data can only go one way, and I can't have any sort of uh, uh, attacks coming in. Uh, and I mentioned the airbag example, but it's really about this continuum across the board. Really important to understand is that in the IT world, um, you know, there, there's a lot of standardization you know, uh, over the years. Of course, the, the cloud is not going away. Um, there's a bunch of clickbait out there saying, oh, the cloud's going away, the edge is going to eat the cloud or whatever. Um, not the case. You can still see an incredible amount of stuff done, done in the cloud, but you're just, you're just going to see more and more done at the edge. And, but IT stuff is fairly standardized, a lot of good stuff happening you know, in that front. But the, in the OT world, the operations world, close to the physical world where, where processes happen, it is really fragmented. It's really messy. Um, there's a lot of, you know, this is where people live and people are, are complicated. Um, and, and so... Dealing with that inherent, um, inherently heterogeneous uh, nature of the edge is challenging. In the IT world, if, if, or if, I'll put it this way, if in the OT world, if there is a security issue or a breach, there is immediate loss of, of, of production or, or, or a risk to life, uh, if not loss of life um, in the OT world. In the IT world, it tends to be, if there's a breach, it tends to be a super long tail, like a credit card breach where for years you play out uh, you play out, um, you know, the, the losses from that. So I like to say, you know, uh, you know, IOT starts in uh, OT and scales in IT. Um, we don't know where compute's going to be running in the end from the edge of the cloud. So you really need to architect that. So we should you know, kind of maybe talk through some of that. But um, it's it's a lot of interesting trends and, and, and challenges when you deal with IOT and edge and, and how it all comes together. But ultimately, it is about let's focus on outcomes and then back into it the right time. The right tech. For sure. Yeah. And, and look, I, I think in, uh, in crypto specifically, but obviously in things like IoT and Edge as well, uh, we see it all the time, right? People get enamored with the technology. They then go looking for a problem to solve with this new piece of technology rather than working kind of in reverse where let's start solving the right. problem and then figure out what technologies empower us to do that. Yeah. Yep. The old just because you can doesn't mean you should uh, um, mantra is focus on the, the outcome. But. For sure. Um, okay. So let, let's get a little bit more into automation, right? And I look at automation as kind of one of these catch-all phrases because um, th there's no magic wand of automation, right? Automation essentially comes down to things like computing power, algorithm software, um, you know, a lot of kind of logic and controllers, et cetera. But how do you kind of sitting in your seat at Dell Technologies think about automation? Uh, or is there anything specifically that you guys are working on in that space? Um, and then, you know, after we touch on that, maybe we can get into some of the technologies you guys are using. Yeah, I mean, automation, yeah, it means, it means a lot of different stuff to different people. I mean, of course, you know, automation and, you know, in the, in the purest sense has been done in like the OT world, the operations technology world for a long time. When you think of like process control, uh, there's been, you know, programmable logic controllers, PLCs and, and factory floors for quite a while, SCADA systems, et cetera. Um, they've been doing these types of things for a while, you know, in manufacturing, of course, you've got automation within, you know, to a certain degree within lots of systems, even cars and, and all that. But 
it's the, the level of it is changing. And then there's also this notion of automation in the purest sense on a factory floor has been running for a long time. Um, you may be building some widget, but you don't necessarily know what's happening in the moment. There's many cases in, in, the, in the history of manufacturing where you could be running your process for you know, days, if not weeks, and not know that you're making bad parts. And so a lot of the, what's new is that, and we, when we're working you know, at Dell Technologies with a lot of uh, companies, you know, we, we provide infrastructure and we work with, with um, a bunch of different domain experts on top in, in the different fields, is how do I provide, quote unquote, real-time visibility to this process? And, and it starts with visibility, but then over time, you're going to start seeing more um, uh, you know, taking, taking automated um, action on, uh, automatic action on any insights that you gain. But this is where, when you look at automation, where it's also very important to kind of going back to what I was saying about kind of the IT and OT worlds um, uh, and, and, the, and the degree of risk when you do something in the OT world, immediate loss of production or life in the IT world, it's, it's, it's a, hey, sorry, you couldn't get your email. I shut down the network because I was concerned about a, 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 a breach. You know, you can't just shut down a factory floor. Uh, I joke all the time, you can't just... Uh, Willy nilly update, you know, things on a factory floor. Um, you know, say, imagine a screen that said, "Hey, save your work. Your production line is rebooting in 15 minutes. We're doing an update." You know, you just can't do that. And so, when you think about automation, you also have to think about the the, the processes involved, or the stakeholders involved, the risk of if you make a decision that's that's um, that create, creates an issue. Uh, walking into the room, term, turning on the lights, kind of automation is not you know a big deal. Um, you know, low risk, uh, making that decision in, in an autonomous fashion, um, uh, making a big decision around turning off your, uh, you know, your production line because of some, some issue or making some change to the process uh, is different. And so what, what you'll see in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the industrial sense typically today is even if someone's collecting data, bringing it into some sort of analytics uh, scenario, maybe applying some AI, machine learning, whatever to do. Um, you know, process improvement, very, it's, it would be very untypical at this point for that, that decision, hey, we could tweak this parameter and make the, the factory more efficient. Very untypical today would that decision be automated back into the factory floor because of the implications. What will happen is that decision will be fed to a, 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 an expert on the, the floor or, or you know, just in the production facility. And then that person would decide, do I make that change? And so it's, when, you, when you look at automation, it, I think it's just really important to think about the implications of, of doing so. And, and the, there's also this need for trust in how it's done um, across these networks. And so it's, it's really interesting. This is why it's so interesting and, and so important to talk about this kind of the notion of people and, and technology um, altogether. Um, last thing I'll say on that is real time is a very uh, loaded word. There's a lot of loaded terms in technology. Uh, real time to a building automation person in terms of making some sort of, you know, gathering data and, and uh, from, from the, the, the building around temperature and, and um, you know, whatever, um, is like 15 minutes. I, I would consider that real time as a building person. If I'm a manufacturing uh, person or if I'm an airbag, you know, as an easy example, I think real time is a fraction of a second that is deterministic. The message must get there in time or there's a problem. If I'm a financial institution, I think real time is a fraction of a second, but, but no one's going to die if your Starbucks doesn't get, you know, thing doesn't go through and you know, transaction. So it's, we've got to really consider when we do automation, all these different things. So, um, I don't know. I mean, we can talk about some examples, and, uh, but, but it's just, it's a really interesting thing. And, and not too many people just say, oh, we're going to go automate everything without thinking of the implications. For sure. And, and it's so interesting to hear you say, you know, the need for trust with automation, but, but the kind of the real time nature being loaded words. Right. Um, it, it's uh, it, it really is so true. Um, and, and obviously kind of the elephant in the room, I guess, is as you talk about automation and this need for trust, how do you think about that being solved? Um, you know, one of the technologies, obviously, that a lot of the listeners on this podcast um, pay attention to blockchain, crypto, uh, Bitcoin, et cetera, and, and the blockchain technology solving for that trust by allowing people to verify information. Um, is that something that you guys are looking at as you try to solve the trust problem in automation or using other technologies? Kind of just talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So, so getting to system level trust is, is key. You know, how do you 
mitigate between across all of these different inherently uh, inherently different uh, stakeholders, you know, heterogeneous systems. Um, so, so ledger technologies, blockchain, um, you know, I think are, are part of it. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, I, I tease in, in some of my blogs uh, about blockchain um, being kind of a, a, a Windex of technology. Um, if you've ever seen the, the movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, um, <laughs> the dad sprays Windex on everything, you know, like you've got a paper cut, oh, but get some Windex. And, and, and so, you know, blockchain, AI, AR, VR, 5G, all these different things, I call them all Windexes of technology. People overuse the terms and, and, and you would have seen over the past number of years, I mean, two years ago, you could have just said blockchain and someone would throw a million dollars at you, you know, VC money. Um, and now it's kind of dried up because there's challenges with, with the compute power required. There's some inefficiencies. Um, if you're in a cold supply chain scenario and someone gets sick and dies because you were the reason why, um, you know, that their food went out of temperature and got contaminated and you were on a blockchain system, all of a sudden you hate blockchain. You know, so fear of exposure you know, creates, creates a, a challenge, all these different things. Uh, but then there's some new technologies like IOTA, you know, we think is a super cool approach to ledger um, you know, technologies, kind of a whole different way of doing it. Uh, we're working on some stuff even within Dell Technologies and VMware. There's a project called Project Concord, like, you know, you're seeing some different emerging things, but I always like to talk about technology in the sense of not a panacea. You, you need to look at it more holistically. So, so when you talk about trust across systems, you know, blockchain is, is, is certainly a, a, a core element or, or ledger, you know, more broadly speaking, we'll say, ledger, ledger technologies. Um, but so is a, a number of other technologies. And so one of the things that we've been working on at Dell, and I talk a lot about in, in you know, different content that I have online and whatnot, is this notion of, um, you know, how do I uh, get to the intrinsic trust required to achieve, um, uh, realize what I call the holy grail of digital. And, and the holy grail of digital, um, I would say, is, is this notion of selling stuff to strangers in simple terms. On one hand, yes, it's it's data. Data is, is, is kind of the obvious answer. Um, and selling or sharing, and it's always on your terms. You always have to value, uh, balance value with privacy and, and IP protection. But selling on your terms, data, um, resources, compute, storage, networking, energy, ride shares, you know, anything consumable, or services, your domain knowledge turned into an API, uh, your 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 um, skills, your behavior, your ethics, you know, um, you know, turn into an API on your terms because you want to be able to go sell your skills to complete strangers. You know, Angie's List on steroids, if, if you've heard of Angie's List uh, or you know, Yelp or whatever, like automated reviews you know, through, through interacting with technology and then putting that into these kind of trusted fabrics. So to, to get to the holy grail, we need intrinsic trust across you know, systems of systems that are inherently heterogeneous because you know, the edge is, is, very, is very messy. Um, and so, so ledger technologies are part of that. Um, you know, so is down to the silicon level root of trust. Um, if I have a trusted device and then I have strong authentication methods for said device or devices, um, I have open API uh, and ingestion methods. So there's transparency in how I acquire that data. This is why at Dell, Dell Tech, we got um, EdgeX Foundry, a, a project within Linux Foundation going uh, about uh, two years ago in open source to do for IoT what Android did for mobile. You think of EdgeX as it's middleware, but it's, you know, it's let me create interoperability between devices and applications, uh, regardless of hardware, software, um, you know, OS, you know, in general, uh, a protocol. We're never going to have one magical protocol standard for IoT. I can deal with inherent fragmentation and connect it to any backend system around an open API that gives me transparency in how that interoperability happens. So I combine, you know, root of trust and, and authentication methods with open APIs like EdgeX and there's other stuff we're doing within the LF Edge project, like in the Crano and all this different stuff. These technologies with immutable storage, uh, I need to be able to put data into object-based storage and, and if you tamper with it, the hash values don't match. Combine that with a, a, a ledger technology and, and some other stuff around trusted execution, like a, a whole meal of, of trust technologies and transparency um, elements. This is how I get to that necessary trust and transparency. It's not one thing, it's how you build systems with the right technologies. If you do this right, you will be able to create data in the physical world, send it off into the ether and collect checks from total strangers. This is scale. For sure. And, and so how do you think about the integration of automation, that ledger technology and like digital currencies, right? Because one of the things that 
um, from an investment thesis that that my partner had for a long time is every stock, bond, currency, and commodity eventually gets digitized. And once the assets themselves are digital, now you can unlock the full potential of automation, right? But before you have that, you still have kind of settlement time issues with the assets. Maybe talk a little bit about that. Well, yeah, that, I mean, it's a great point. I mean, it, 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 it reminds me of a story. Um, I was, I was, uh, I meet with a lot of people and, and I, I talk about, you know, IOT, um, you know, a lot of, it's, it's more about the maker movement than it is about uh, anything. It's, it's this, this ability to go innovate very quickly, you know, the Kickstarters and the Indiegogos of the world, you know, your Raspberry Pis and Arduinos kits and ecosystems. And, and then a lot of companies are getting into, you know, the old innovators dilemma, you know, if, if I just do what I've always done faster, um, you know, I'll succeed. No, you have to start to pivot. And and uh, I, I joke that I've got a, a gift card list of people to send the Innovators Dilemma book to. Um, because it's just a lot of people are kind of struggling with this. And, and um, you know, which, you know, it's understandable, but you really have to kind of you know, um, change the way you do things if you want to keep up in, in this type of market. So I was on this call. I had this call around IoT strategy with one of the big payment provider uh, folks. And... And I prepared kind of this for the end and because I figured it would go this way. And I knew that Square, you know, the, the mobile payments um, uh, solution had, had really kind of impacted, you know, that industry, the, the traditional payments, payment processing industry. And and we get in there and, and we're having this call and they're saying, oh, we don't know what to do you know, for IT Strike. We don't want another Square to happen. And I'm like, oh, I can understand that. That, that really probably was a, a big impact to your business. And it was just kind of spinning and, and you could tell that they're just stuck in innovator salami. Like, what do we do you know, next? What's the big thing? And I'd saved this for the very end. I'm like, hey guys, I need to get, I need to go. But have you thought about when machines start making payments? And it and, and that kind of blew their minds. And I'm like, I didn't say anything about it because you know, to be respectful. It's like the fact that this this blew your minds is why another square is gonna happen to you because you're not yeah. changing how you do things. And, and or changing how you think about things. And, and so when it comes back to what you know, the question, this notion of automation, this notion of if you can kind of create this digital currency and, and you, you build the trust in the systems as, as, as you know, we're working on with a bunch of folks, I know the IOTA, IOTA folks are working on, we're actually collaborating um, with them uh, closely here. Uh, we're doing some stuff in Linux Foundation, you know, Edge Project and, and EdgeX and there's some new stuff coming that I can't quite talk about yet. But if I do it right, real automation and, and real business starts to get um, to really scale when you're able to kind of trust machines, you know, in the sense to, you know, if I'm a, a machine and I'm doing, a, a, there's predictive maintenance being done and I'm, I'm about to be broken, why don't I order the part for myself and put in a work order and then have that come, you know, have me um, get fixed. But better than that, better than that, how about all of the machines in a region all look at themselves and, co- and collaborate and say, hey, look, we're all having issues. And so why don't we send out a tech to replace the, you know, upgrade all of these things at once because we're going to make that tech more efficient. Oh, no, actually, I'm like about to be broken. So I'm going to order a new machine because if you fix me, you're just going to spend more money over three years than if you just replace me. You know, all of this kind of these smarts and this automation and these layers of decision making and this efficiency driven at a, a both at a local, regional and global scale. This is the real potential. Oh, and by the way, let me now let me talk about different stakeholders crossing you in know, cities and, and public and private boundaries and all that. Um, you know, uh, uh, imagine a world where your 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 refrigerator could order food from the local grocer and make a payment. That grocer then gives it to a delivery person who's a different party. That delivery person comes to your house and then says, "Hey, can I get into the into the house?" And then in the house, uh, that the, the security system owned by somebody else opens the door. Uh, so it's not like one company in the middle of it, whether it's an Amazon or Google, like I'm mean, doing great things, don't get me wrong, but to be able to do these types of, of automation things, these, these systems of systems, we cannot have any single entity own the trust. We need to collaborate on decentralized trust. It's like, you know, imagine if one company owned the internet, it just wouldn't work. And so to get to all of these great players out there working on this notion of, Hey, let's get out of the lock-in mentality. Let's collaborate on enough of kind of open plumbing, both in terms of interoperability with things like EdgeX, but then also, you know, this distributed trust, the stuff we're doing with IOTA and a bunch of other players and whatnot, um, you know, and some new stuff coming, as I mentioned. I need to get to where I have intrinsic trust across all domains, you know, web and mobile and brick and mortar and, and uh, industrial and home and auto. 
then we start seeing that automation stuff really scale and really cool stuff happen uh, over time. For sure. And, and I guess um, kind of walk us through, you know, one of the examples that you're most excited about. So um, you take this distributed ledger technology, you implement it uh, along with these hardware devices uh, that are collecting data in the real world. And, and you start getting you know closer and closer to kind of the promise of automation. Um, what does that look like or what's one of the examples that you're super excited about? Yeah, yeah, cool. So, so, yeah, so many cool things. You know, I, I know I'm talking a lot of bigger stuff, and and um, you know, we always like to say it's good to start uh, start small. Um, I always say think big, act small. Um, and another thing that we're finding you know, with Dell Technologies, we're working in so many different industries: manufacturing, um, uh, transportation systems, retail, uh, uh, healthcare, you name it. Um, is that the use case that you start out with, maybe you're just trying to solve a simple business problem, uh, is, not, is not the use case that you end up with finding the most value in. Uh, so an example that pops into my head is, is this notion of, um, there's, a, there's a provider that we're working with that's working with a steel manufacturer. Uh, this steel manufacturer uses more power uh, to produce uh, you know, their, their, their steel than the city next to them. And so the initial, you know, question was, hey, how do I save some, some money on my electric bill? It's, it's crazy. Um, and so they come in and then they take this holistic approach, looking at all the different systems, you know, and, and, and of course the, the core process, uh, but also logistics and all this different stuff. And they ended up not only saving power, but they also saved so much power and got so many different efficiencies that were able to sell energy credits back to the, the power company. And so actually turned it from a cost center into a profit center uh, in, in, in a sense. So it's it's really cool when you start seeing these types of things where when you, when you talk about automation, you talk about you know, the art of the possible, um, if you set things up right and you kind of architect you know, properly so that you can kind of grow as, as you get you know, efficiencies, you start focusing on this trust across networks, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, I like to say that if you're, if you're focusing on, you know, most of, most of this stuff starts with driving efficiency and, 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 and the like, um, but there's only so much you can cut costs. Um, if you're focusing on new money, new revenue pools, new opportunity, the sky's the limit. So you want to kind of have that balance and be really thinking about the, the, uh, the big picture. For sure. And, and so as we kind of look to that future world of automation, which I think you and I both believe will happen, um, what are the technical challenges that kind of stand between us, right? So from where we are today to where we're going, what are some of those technical challenges that you think need to be um, kind of solved? Yeah. So, so, you know, first off, I'll say that it, one of the biggest challenges is, is, is in biggest variables and also greatest assets is people within organizations. And so there's a, there's that people problem that we've talked about. Technically, um, when you talk about the scale factor, first and foremost, it's about in, driving interoperability, you know, open uh, always wins in the end. Uh, the past four years in, in kind of IOT has been about everybody you know, trying to create these platforms and thinking if I can just lock you in, I can sell your data if you let me. And the reality is, is what you need to do is open it up uh, at the edge where data is created. And this is why we've been investing in things like EdgeX Foundry and a bunch of other projects and collaborating with, with, with players around ledger technologies and the trust stuff that we've talked about. Um, you need to collaborate on the, the, the technical plumbing um, that will enable you know, open interoperability between you know, devices and applications, uh, that trust factor that we've talked about um, security is a, is a challenge for sure, you know, maintaining privacy and governance, but it's also related back to how you architect. Um, to get to the real potential over time, we need to extend cloud native principles, this notion of platform independent, loosely coupled uh, uh, architectures, um, uh, microservices, this notion of continuous delivery, uh, those types of principles that have been you know, taking a, a good hold in, in the cloud extend those principles to as close to the edge as possible. So I have that flexibility to rapidly uh, assemble components from heterogeneous suppliers around kind of common you know, baseline frameworks. And so EdgeX was set up to extend cloud native principles to the IoT edge um, as close as you can, uh, where, where all of a sudden the devices become so constrained, they can't support containers and things like that, and virtualization. But I want to be able to run um, compute across that continuum and, and literally move workloads anywhere along that, that line and kind of automate that, uh, that analytics. And I want to be able to do that with, with providers, domain experts from many different um, uh, uh, domains um, around that open API, around that interoperable base. 
And so the technical challenges really kind of come into architecturally how you do things, you know, making sure you abstract the, the data and application from the underlying infrastructure, uh, focus on these different uh, tools that, that ensure security and, and trust you know, at scale, um, and, and just kind of build out things in a collaborative fashion, uh, that, that plumbing, you know, we need, we need more consistent plumbing. Again, imagine if the internet was owned by one person, it wouldn't work out so well. You know, you, you need that open plumbing to get there. So the technical challenge, um, a lot of people talk about security. Uh, security is certainly a, a big one. It's all about defense and depth. Many of the breaches that we've seen in IoT has been where there's basically no security applied. So we do need to separate out, um, you know, can it be done versus was it done and, and did someone you know, kind of uh, uh, you know, make a mistake in terms of um, you know, not, not allowing people to um, change their password? I mean, the, the breach that took down the net uh, in the northeast of the U.S. a few years ago was literally the millions of cameras got a, you know, took part of a DDoS attack because like, I think it was like under 20 sets of usernames and password got into all those cameras. So, you know, A, change your password. But B, it's, 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 it's really about kind of how you apply it. And ultimately for security as a technical, when it comes back to technical challenges is more about the, the, how do you apply security technologies in a usable way? If you make things so difficult to use, then no one's going to want to use them or they'll just bypass it and then bad things happen. So lots of different things around architectural considerations and how you apply the different tools in the right way. And then, how do you, and then of course, it's like you're saying, you know, how do you collaborate on the necessarily open parts? to get to the true potential. For sure. Well, listen, Jason, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to have this conversation. It's fascinating for me personally to kind of hear how you're thinking about it, um, you know, sitting there at the, the PTO role, or the Dell technology, and kind of your background, not only on the the, um, the um, kind of mechanics part, but, but then also the software, and edge computing, et cetera. So, um, you know, just thanks again from, uh, from all of us for uh, taking time, frankly, to just educate us. Hey, everyone, Pop here. If you like this episode of Off The Chain and want to help us take crypto to the top of the Apple, Spotify, and other podcast charts, please do us a favor and rate, review, and subscribe. To review, simply go to the Off The Chain homepage, scroll down until you see the five blank stars. Taking 15 seconds to fill those stars in and leave a quick review goes a long way in helping us take the entire crypto ecosystem to the top of the charts. I appreciate you listening and see you next time on Off The Chain.